tip on knockdown. When you're doing a knockdown repair, you have to see what is the direction of the texture applicator in the original job. Would you say that's going up and down or side to side? Correct, side to side. We have to duplicate the application side to side. I have a Lexand applicator right here from Hyde. Very good tool, let's do it. Come on, sit, look at that, side to side, side to side. Come on now, nice and easy. Spencer, when do you start knocking it down? I tried to do it, I followed all your directions, but it didn't look right. When do I start knocking it down, Spencer? Answer. When the material loses its shine. That's when you start knocking it down. Okay, there you have it. So that's the old texture. And that starts the new. What do you think? Well, guess what? As you can see, it's a little dark in some areas and we're not fully done. So let's show you how we blend this. Aha. Nice and easy. Oh, now that's looking better, right? We're not done. Notice I'm going in two directions, like this, like that. How's it matching up? Are we done yet? Matching it up? Not yet. Now, especially just beyond the repair, we want to sand the outer edge very carefully. How do you know you're done? You go like this. Where the old meets the new, you do this, up and down. Side by side's not gonna reveal it. You wanna go up and down, cause you're going from old onto new. Aha, uh -huh. very good. Even if your te texture were perfect and your transition point between old and new is drastic, it's gonna be visible. New texture that doesn't have paint on it, such as this one does for years of paint. You're not done until you sand it. Because you have to simulate paint on it, years of paint. And the way to do that is to knock down the points. They're too well defined at this point, you know? Take a step back, give it a look, and when you paint it, which the customer is not having me paint it, 
Somebody drove through the wall. It's a garage. They drove through the wall and they said, hey, do me a favor, patch that hole. So you know what? I said, not only will I patch it, but I'll texture it. Because I wanted to do a recent video on texturing. Because I haven't put a texture video on my channel for a while. All right, let's go to the bedroom now. With the bedroom, my technique will be just a little different. So here's the old and here's the new. Looks similar, right? But we really don't know yet until we smooth a bit down with the sponge. Now, I wet it. I said it was gonna be a little different, right? One, this is reducing the dust. And two, it takes those sharp edges off, okay? It wets them. It helps you take the sharpness of the texture off. Make it wet. Right. You see now? There we go. Feathering it out off to the edges. Now we'll paint that and show you the transition. That's the old. That's the new. That's the old. That's the new. this painted.
Can I just paint it? Can I just put the old color back up here or what? And not deal with, is this gonna keep paint off of this texture? What do you think? The answer is no. Look under the tape. What do you see there right in the middle of your screen? A space. How do we get rid of that? We're gonna put clear caulking in there. So that we clog the seam and it dries clear and you can't see that it was caulked because it's clear and it takes on, it's translucent and transparent. It takes on the color behind it. Isn't that brilliant? Thank you. And so never paint, thinking that your tape is gonna keep all the paint out. Big mistake. We're gonna put clear caulking right up against there with our finger, rub it in, even in a circular motion. Oh yeah, because we wanna get those nooks and crannies. Pass up this task. Gotta rub it in. Gotta rub it in. You'll be happy you did it. Gotta rub it in. Don't pass it up. Spencer, it's gonna make a ridge. There's already a ridge. This is a textured surface and there's already a ridge from the paint. Okay? So don't worry about the ridge. They'll deal with that when they change the color of the room. Now, we don't see a space there, do we? Okay, now you understand the point I'm trying to make. Now, you know and I know a lot of do-it-yourselfers use a lot of paint, right? You kind of like dip it and you just start rolling it on or brushing it on. So this technique that I'm teaching you, or sharing with you, this is going to help you folks, even those of you who put it on too thick. Look, that's all jammed now with caulking. You're not going to get it under the tape. Look at how beautiful. And guess what we're gonna do? We're going to take the tape off right away. Why? Because we don't want bridging. What is that? Oh, we got a nice roller now. Beautiful. What is bridging? Well, bridging is simply your paint gunking up between the tape, making one. You want to take this off so it doesn't dry. Now, let's just roll. We brush. Why are we brushing and rolling? Anybody? We're brushing and rolling. Why are we doing that? Why would it matter? Well, the primary reason why we're doing it is to have the, the same texture of the paint going on. So what I'm doing is stippling. You hear this noise? Listen. You hear that? That's making a stipple. Not exactly flat, right? But if you go with a roller, you'll hear, I'm sorry, if you go with a brush, let's listen to what sound the brush makes. Listen to this. Now listen to the roller. The sound is different. And look at the difference in how it lays out. See that? So, if you want to do it right, you want it all to look like this. That's why we're doing brush and roller. Now I promised you I would take the tape off. 
on on the video so that you could see how it looked immediately after me finishing right and that's what i'm going to do for you now when you're rolling texture press down on your roller a little harder than normal because these nooks and crannies when your paint dries you're going to see it if you're not aggressive enough now let's just take that off and see how i did Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Look at that. Look at that. Can somebody just type in the comment section, if you don't mind, just to stroke my ego a little bit? Can you just put in there, oh boy? Thank you. Oh boy. I like that. Now we take the bottom. Why are we taping and caulking? Why are we doing that? For the same reason. You don't want this caulking. Caulking is your friend. Why are we caulking the tape at the bottom? Same reason. We don't want this brown paint on our white trim. So we caulk it. And guess what? We're using white caulking because the trim is white. And the white that you see now is gonna get painted brown. That's your second coat. Let's let it dry and I'll show you all cleaned up. I strongly suggest that you use this technique with tape and caulking. That's the old texture. And this is the new. It's the one I just applied. Let's say they match perfectly right now. Still, what would be the difference between the new and the old? Well, you already know. It's the sharp points. Because the new doesn't have paint over it, right? but the old does. And so its edges are softened. Those edges you're looking at in the middle of your screen, they have a minor radius to them. While the new, they, they're more sharp. You see that in the middle of your screen? And so the way to put your final 
finishing touch on your new texture. We're talking about knockdown. We're not gonna talk, we're not doing this to orange peel. Take a look at that sharpness, right? Watch this. Take a good look. Ah, you see that? You see how I made it less sharp? Huh. I'm rounding the edges. See that? Because where it's been painted already, the paint has coated those edges and made them round. And so you want to simulate to the best of your ability the old look. So you know how some people walk around with torn jeans or furniture is made to look what's called stressed? We're stressing the knockdown, especially where new transitions into old. We want to go up and down, side to side, because we don't want some drastic transition, all right? Give it a good wet polishing. Okay, and that'll round out your edges. And then of course, here's what I would recommend. That you put a semi-gloss on your new knockdown when you're doing a transition. Why semi? Well, semi has plastic in it, right? And so it'll hug those, and it's thicker paint than flat. So it'll hug your edges and sort of drip onto the edges and dry rather than flat seeping into it and not really doing it enough justice. So hold on, let me clarify. I would prime it first with a suitable primer. And then after I prime it, I would put a layer of semi-gloss on this so that I would round my edges with the paint to simulate that. I think semi-gloss would do the best job of all the sheens, okay? That's why I suggest it. And there you have it. Any questions about knockdown texture? Please let me know in the comments section below.